This is a video I've been needing and wanting to make for weeks, if not months now, because the last time I updated my rating scale was in 2016, but I was just having trouble committing to the change that I wanted to make to my rating scale. And then last week, Marinez from My Name is Marinez made a video like this talking about her own rating scale for books, and it really helped to just solidify the fact that I really needed to change my rating scale, so here I am. So to give some semblance of structure to this video, I'm gonna start by talking about the major change to my rating scale and the general broad sweeping meaning of each star rating. Then after that I'll talk about why this was a change I needed to make, and once I finish that I'm gonna jump into the more specific details of what each star rating means and how I determine these ratings. So firstly, the big change to my rating scale. Up until this point, the three star rating on my scale has encompassed everything from it was alright to I liked it, whereas a two star rating was I disliked it and a one star rating was I hated it. In my new system, one star out of five encompasses both I hated it and I disliked it, two stars is it was alright, it was okay, it was meh, three stars is a firm I liked it and four and five basically remain unchanged, where four stars is I really liked it, and five stars is it was amazing, I loved it, perfection. So now moving on to the why. Why was this a necessary change to my rating scale? Lately I've been having a lot of difficulty deciding on what ratings to give books, and so I started thinking more deeply about my ratings, and I realized that I have six distinct broad opinions on the books that I read. Again, these categories are rather broad, but the six of them are I hated it, I disliked it, it's all right, it's okay, meh, I liked it, I really liked it, and it was amazing. The conundrum here is kind of obvious. I have six categories, I guess, of ratings, and I only have five stars to put all of those within. So two of them have to be combined somewhere. And like I mentioned earlier, up until this point, I've had it was all right, it was okay, meh, and I liked it combined into my three star rating. But since I mostly read books that I'm interested in and that are intriguing to me and that I want to read, the vast majority of the books that I read are all right or meh books or above. Which means that with the rating scale I've had up until recently, I've been overutilizing my three and four stars and underutilizing my one and two stars. Basically, I just feel like I haven't been getting the full use out of all five stars of the rating system that I've been given, and I want to change my rating scale so that it utilizes a wider range of that scale more often. Furthermore, like I mentioned lately, I've been struggling to figure out what ratings to give books, and the biggest thing muddling my brain and adding to the confusion is the fact that I liked it and it was all right, it was meh, have both been included into three stars. So many times I found myself unsure whether to give a book I just liked three or four stars because giving it just a three star feels like I'm saying it was okay, it was all right, it was meh, versus saying I liked it. So I often have found myself giving books that I liked a high three out of five to distinguish it from books that were just all right or okay. So therefore changing my rating scale so that books that are just all right or okay are two stars out of five rather than three stars just is going to add a lot of clarity to my ratings and help me more easily figure out what to rate the books that I read. So a lot of the reason that I've been hesitant to make this change is that I think that just upon a quick glance, a two out of five rating to most people denotes something more harsh than just it was okay. I think when most people see a two out of five rating, they interpret it as I disliked this book. So I was hesitant to change my scale to something that could easily be misinterpreted by people upon a quick glance, but I think that overall in general it's a positive change because it really will help me add that clarity to my ratings and I can just explain what I mean in my actual reviews, which I generally do. So that's the why. Now moving on to the specifics of my rating scale, the star ratings, what they mean, and how I determine what gets what star. I used to use a 10 star scale instead of a 5 star scale almost exclusively because that's just the way that my brain thinks about ratings for books, but lately I've been using it more for my own mental clarity rather than as a rating to give other people. I like the 10 star scale because I tend to think of 
book ratings as almost like a grade so giving a book a 9 out of 10 is like giving it an A minus but most people don't rate like that so lately I've been using mostly just the 5 star scale and using the 10 star scale as an addendum to my written reviews on Goodreads. But when I do mention my 10 star scale, I do also bring up how it translates into my five star system. Before jumping into the specifics, it is important to note that for Goodreads, for half stars, I round down rather than up because this is a rating scale, not arithmetic. I understand a 4.5 in math rounds up to five, not down to four. But if I give a book 4.5 out of five rather than a five out of five, I would rather round down to four and put that on Goodreads rather than going up to five and making it look like a new all-time favorite book when it's not. I'm not going to round it up to a five if I didn't give it a five in the first place and think it deserved a five. Lastly, before jumping into each specific rating, I'm going to give some book examples for each one of these star ratings. And since this is a new rating scale, this is all kind of in flux, but I've chosen books for these that I think are pretty solid. I'm pretty confident in whatever rating I use them for, but it could change the more comfortable I get with this new rating scale. Not sure. Okay. Firstly, what does it mean if I give a book no stars on Goodreads? Basically, it doesn't mean anything. I don't give out zero star ratings. If I leave a book unrated on Goodreads, it just means I'm still making up my mind or I don't know what my rating is. Okay, a 0.5 rating. This is the only one I round up on Goodreads just because I can't give it zero stars because as I mentioned, no stars is my I haven't rated it yet rating. So these will round up to a one star on Goodreads. 0.5 stars means I hated this book. It was bad and probably also offensive. I don't give out this rating very much simply because if I dislike a book that much to the point of hatred, I'm probably gonna DNF it. That said, some books with this rating of 0.5 stars are Looking for Alaska by John Green, The Leveler by Julia Durango, and Shatter Me by Taha Damafi. All right, one star out of five. I actively dislike these books, but not full-on hatred. I had a lot of problems with it, and I definitely would not recommend it. A couple of books I've given one star out of five are The Selection by Kira Cass and Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. 1.5 out of five means that I disliked this book, but I don't have particularly strong opinions about that dislike. I just didn't like it. Books with this rating include The Elite by Kira Cass, Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, and Unravel Me by Taha Damafi. Two stars out of five means my opinion on this book is basically non-existent. I'm probably gonna forget almost everything about this book and will not think about it much, if at all, ever again. Books I've given two stars out of five include Ten by Gretchen McNeil, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs, and The Fade Out Volume 1. 2.5 out of five means that it was all right. It was meh. It was okay. This is right smack dab in the middle of my rating scale, and accordingly my opinion on it is just kind of a shrug. A couple of books I've given two out of five include Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes and Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Three stars means I liked this book. I enjoyed reading it. There were definitely some negatives, but the positives outweighed those, and I have overall a positive opinion on the book. Some books I've given three stars out of five include Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami, all Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban, and Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. 3.5 out of 5 means that although this book probably won't show up in any sort of favorites list, it was a solid read. Typically if I give this rating, if I'm torn between a 3 and a 4, it generally means that I either enjoyed it but recognized the flaws, or I recognized the quality was there, but I didn't enjoy it enough to give it four stars. Books I've given three out of five include Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor and Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Four stars out of five means I really enjoyed this book and it's one I'm probably going to bring up a lot on my channel. Four out of five is especially common among books within my favorite series that are not my favorite book in that series, if that makes sense. Like the average book in one of my favorite series is a four out of five read for me. Books I've given a four out of five include Special Topics and Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, and Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. 4.5 out of five. When I give this rating, it's generally after a lot of waffling over whether the book deserves five stars or not, and then deciding that it's not quite five star worthy. I have an overwhelmingly positive opinion on this book, but either one major thing or a few minor things kept me from feeling like 
I could give it a confident five stars. Some books I've given 4.5 out of 5 include 1Q84 and Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, and House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Five stars means I loved it, it was perfect, and it has that it factor. Generally five star books are great quality wise and also hit me really hard emotionally and make me fall in love with them. Honestly after I finish a five star book I generally just find myself sitting there and holding it for a couple minutes after I finish it because it just hit me that hard. Some books I've given five stars include The Diviners by Libba Bray, If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, and And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. So that's what each star means. Now how do I determine what falls under what star? You'll notice that a lot of the verbiage I just used to describe each star rating centers around how much I enjoyed the book. And that's because my enjoyment of the book is probably the biggest factor to what rating I eventually give it. That might sound too subjective or maybe not critical enough, but ratings are inherently subjective. And on top of that, a book's quality plays a huge part in how much I enjoy a book, so the quality of the book is like woven into my enjoyment of it. Like if I love a book and I get obsessed with it and I give it five stars out of five, chances are I think that the technical aspects of the book are well done as well. I can generally recognize when I like a book despite its faults, and therefore rate accordingly. So quality of the book still obviously plays a huge part in my rating, just more indirectly. On the flip side though, we all do enjoy things that we're aware are of a lesser quality, that's kind of the whole point of guilty pleasures. If I find myself enjoying a book despite recognizing its flaws, the author clearly did something right in there to cause me to enjoy it. Like maybe the world build was really bland and the characters were really bland, but the plot kept me on edge. And although I'm not going to give a book like that five stars despite its flaws and call it perfect and flawless, I can't ignore the fact that I did enjoy it. So I rate accordingly. All this said about enjoyment versus quality, I do still take the quality into account on its own just to a slightly smaller degree. I don't necessarily have like a checklist of things that I look for in every book, but I tend to just pay attention to what jumps out at me negatively or positively. For example, for some reason I rarely notice the quality of a book's writing unless I really love it and think it's really well done or I really hate it and I think the writing's not good. Otherwise you probably won't hear me mention the book's writing. Obviously there are certain aspects that are more prevalent and hard to ignore like characters or plot, but basically I just focus on what stands out to me within the book rather than having a specific criteria I use for every book. So I think that was everything I wanted to talk about for my new rating scale, uh, what the stars mean, and how I choose the ratings. I'm sure there are other like specific things I could discuss, but I probably won't think of those until I've stopped recording. <laughs> I guess the last thing I want to mention is that I've made videos in the past discussing ratings that I've changed, and obviously with this new rating scale several of my ratings on books have changed. If you'd like to see me make another video talking about those specific ratings that have changed, let me know, I might do one in the near future. Otherwise they are all there on Goodreads if you'd like to take a look. That said, there are some previous ratings, especially from a long time ago, that I'm still kind of unsure about because it's been so long that I don't know how to update my rating to match my current opinion because I'm not sure I have a current opinion. So there are several opinions on my Goodreads that I'm probably not going to end up changing just because I feel like if I change them it would be based on an uninformed opinion because it's been like four, five, six years since I read the book and my memory is foggy. But I think that is everything. I really hope that this new rating scale and the changes that I've made really help me to add some clarity to my ratings because I've had such a difficult time trying to figure things out over the past several months. As always, links to all my social media are down in the description. I'm mostly active on Twitter and Goodreads. Please add me as a friend on Goodreads. I'd love to be friends with all of you on there. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!